Hey everybody, my name is Joseph Puckett with Craig Wiggins Coaching, and I'm so thankful to, to have you all here today for what's going to be a jam-packed webinar on how to really crush it with leads. And it's going to be brought to you by our friends and awesome partners at Quote Wizard. Uh, Quote Wizard's been a part of CWC Live events going back for years. They work really fantastically with many of our agencies. A lot of the agencies that I coach and consult on a one-on-one -on -one basis that are in our higher level coaching and mentoring programs rave about quote wizards leads and we are joined today by Greg and Kelsey from quote wizard and they have a really powerful presentation uh, for you all it's not just gonna be a pitch on why to use quote wizard even though you all should consider it but it's gonna be how to manage leads better how to build that pipeline for success so I'm super excited to have them do this presentation they're gonna go through their spiel which can take 15 to 20 minutes or so and then we're gonna get to your questions so if you can chat you can feel free to chat questions or if you're on an Allstate computer and can't chat because they disabled that for some reason on Zoom, click the Q&A button. The Q&A button is actually easier for me to monitor questions and to, to moderate the questions. Uh, but we will get to all of your questions, all right? So even as they're presenting, go ahead and be submitting the Q&A or chats. This call is being recorded, and if you're a CWC member, it will be on our platform probably in about two or three hours. It takes a little while for it to encode. It'll be in the recorded webinars course, recorded webinars course. So you can watch it over and over and over again. Have your team watch it to pick up the tips anytime for years to come. I'll have it up there this evening. And with that said, that's all the housekeeping. I'm going to pass it over to Greg and Kelsey. Y'all do your general introduction. Then Kelsey, when you're ready, you know how to bring up that PowerPoint. Thanks, Joseph. Uh, my name is yeah, Kelsey. I represent yeah, the, uh, the business development manager for the Northeast and Midwest. And I work alongside Greg here, who has a very similar role, um, who I, he can introduce himself. <laughs> yeah, I'm Greg Verdi. I'm a business development manager here at Quote Wizard 2. I'm excited to meet everyone on the call today and go through everything. Joseph, thanks for the introduction. And Kelsey, if you want to start with the presentation, take it from here. Awesome. So like Joseph said, the presentation really is just to kind of you guys manage the pipeline program. Process, give you some tips on how to work the leads. Um, any questions you have, just wait till the end. We'll have QA and you can go from here. So, next slide, please, Kelsey. Sorry, it went dark in here, but all right, quick agenda. So, who is Quote Wizard? Insurance, shopping trends, pipeline of success, QA, why Quote Wizard and pricing getting started? Let's go ahead. So, who is Quote Wizard? So, we're the insurance division of Lending Tree, yet still operate like the family owned business that it was that began in 2006. So we're coming up on two years now that um, after Lending Tree had acquired Quote Wizard. So um, we're the insurance arm of Lending Tree. It's nice to kind of have the branding and the national backing of Lending Tree when we're looking at marketing and everything else. So it's nice to have that name brand recognition, Lending Tree behind us. And we sell auto, home, and renter insurance leads to agents and carriers and have offices in Seattle, Denver, and Sacramento where we employ a little over 200 incredibly talented people. So a little humble brag there, but uh, it's really nice that we kind of still operate like the family owned business that we started as, um, but have the backing of Lending Tree and, and all the marketing and resources and everything else. So uh, next slide, please. How Quote Wizard generates internet leads. So how the leads are generated is really important. We spend a little over $8 million a month with Google to ensure that we have high ranking results on search. So we want to be the top three ranking on search every time. So if you and your free time, um, just Google auto insurance, home insurance rates in your area, you should see Quote Wizard showing up towards the top most of those times. So that's what kind of our bread and butter and what differentiates us from our competitors is um, how much and the quality of leads that we have through search. Um, some other ways that we generate leads are through social media, display, marketing relationships, and email marketing. Um, but really just when you're talking to lead providers and you're looking at who to work with, you know, ask what percentage of leads come from search. Those are going to be your high intent consumers, your high quality people who uh, have gone through a long process, but want to talk to you. It's not just someone We want to make sure that there's no bait and switch where someone says, you know, click here and win an iPad and you talk to them and they say, you know, why, why are you talking to me? Um, we want to make sure that the leads are high quality and intent and that's where the search comes into play. So next slide. And there's some partners that we work with there too. So insurance shopping trends. 
Consumers are shopping. So um, people are going online and they're shopping. So um, insurance shopping volumes have grown each year since 2009. If you don't do anything, your book of business will shrink. So there's an 80% industry average uh, retention rate. So you have to do something to counteract this or else your book will shrink. And consumers shop for a variety of reasons, price and satisfaction being the main reasons. And just a quick example of a life event, uh, one in four individuals that sell their home also shop their auto insurance within 45 days. So that's a good time to reach out to them. There's some quick stats on the right. I won't read them all, but you can kind of look at them quickly. Next slide. So why internet leads? Sorry. So people, myself included, whenever I do anything nowadays, um, I start online. So whether I'm looking to travel or I'm looking for a restaurant, I start online and that's where I start my experience. And we're seeing the same thing with insurance. So that's where internet leads come into play. Um, you know, choice. People want a comparative advantage, uh, a comparative advantage in having those quotes at their fingertips. So someone's at home, they're watching TV, um, you know, they're on their phone, they're on their laptop, they're, they're looking for quotes, they just want something quickly, you know, in today's day and age, everyone just wants something right away. Um, they want that accessibility. Um, and the main reason that people look to shop with internet leads is for price and value. Um, so when you're looking with these internet leads specifically, you know, price is really important. So 64% of insurance shoppers cite price is the primary reason to look for new insurance and 33% cite competitive pricing as the main decision driver to switch. So with the internet leads specifically, you wanna be competitive with your rates. And just this slide just reinforcing that internet leads are kind of the future. Um, not to say that people don't still go to their agents in a brick and mortar store and you know talk insurance, but more and more people are more likely to do it online. And I think with COVID and everything else, it's just becoming you know, personal experiences, interaction is just not, what people want right now so you really do have to take advantage of the internet leads or else um, you'll miss out on that that huge space where people are um, you know looking for for insurance so next slide please pipeline of success so what should agencies do before starting leads so the main thing you want to do is people is hiring an awesome team so this isn't an easy business this isn't an easy working internet leads is not easy at all um, it is a grind and you have to have the right people with the right mindsets and some things to work with on your team is just training. So you wanna have good content, you wanna have scripting for your people to go over. Um, so each morning, if you just do role play and scripting, whether it's 10, 15 minutes in the morning each day, just go over common objections that they should see, you know, you want them to lead the guide the conversations. Once they kind of feel comfortable in that way and they have everything down, then it's really just a plug and play. So um, once you have a team that's willing to work and, and has good habits and does the scripting and role play, um, and you repeat and train every day, you should do great. Um, so it's really just kind of putting in the upfront work, making sure everyone is bought into the process. You know, people don't just say internet leads, all these suck. If you have people like that, then it's, they are, the leads are gonna suck because they're not gonna work them properly. So just hire the right people, make sure they're trained appropriately, have them do role play, and you should have a lot of success. So next slide. Hold your staff accountable. What are the next steps for success? So this is just, this slide really just reinforces that you want to kind of track everything that you're doing. It makes it easier for us too. And we're kind of doing account reviews with you to see where you're having issues or where you're potentially having, um, you know, where in the funnel you're having issues. So you want to track your speed to contact. So how quickly are you contacting the leads? You want to track your contact rate. So what percentage of leads are you actually contacting? Calls and activities per day. You just want to track your team and, and how many calls per day they're making on the leads, when they're making the calls, make sure that you're working them effectively. Your quote rate of the leads you get a hold of, how many are you quoting? And just kind of tracking the volume of all these activities is really helpful for us. So if we do a review and say, you know, you're having issues, what's your contact rate? How quickly are you, you know, contacting the leads? How, how many of them are you quoting? It's just good for us to know where you might be having issues. And something that's really important is to automate your process. So utilizing a CRM is really beneficial. Um, not to say you can't have success without a CRM, but it gives you a big leg up on who you're going up against if you do have one. So please try to utilize one if you have access to it. Um, so something that gives you automated calling, texting, and emailing, and just a quick stat there, sales organizations experience an 87% higher conversion rate when using auto distribution. So having that thing in place where you can just distribute the leads right away without having to manually distribute them is really beneficial. And just for tracking and everything else, just your team being able to go into the CRM, tracking when they should be sending follow-ups, what stage the leads in everything else just having a crm makes the process a lot easier so next slide what's the best lead pipeline process 
Um, this slide is really straightforward, but pick up the phone and call. Uh, some people you know, still have concerns about just calling, but please do that first, call quickly, and then send texts and email in between. So um, some agents they talk to don't know that they have permission to text the leads, but you do. So please, you know, texting is really effective. So text the leads, call, email, and repeat. So really straightforward, but just if you have 12 touch points in the first week, that's kind of where we see you should have success. Um, and yeah, really straightforward. Call quickly, send texts after scheduled appointments, send emails, and repeat. So um, next slide. Speed to contact. So no surprise here, but how quickly you contact the lead has a huge impact on your conversion rate. So you want to ideally contact the lead within five minutes. If you can do that, you have a huge advantage. Um, if you can't do it within five minutes, if you can do it within 30 minutes, you still have a 62% conversion gain. And then I think there's one more bullet point that um, a third of the leads don't receive a response at all. So that's a shocking stat to me that um, some of the competition you're going up against doesn't follow up on the lead at all. So even if you have a busy day, and you didn't get to the lead quickly, um, you know, do it at the end of the day and you're still ahead of your competition. Then there's a quick chart there on the right that shows the impact of speed of call on conversion rate. So if you call from the first minute, it's 391% increase on conversion. You can kind of see throughout the day, um, calling quickly is really important. So try to put your most effort towards getting the leads quickly and calling them quickly. You know, outside of that, do your typical follow-ups. But if you have the first at bat on the lead, you have a huge advantage. So please try to get to the leads quickly. All right, next slide. I think this is where I'm gonna take it, transfer it over to Kelsey. So Kelsey, you wanna take it from here? Yes, thank you. Um, all right, so this is a great slide. I'm just talking about different ways based off of our personal feedback from our most successful agents, uh, kind of what their typical sales routine looks like as far as contacting. Um, so the optimal process includes a mix of communication channels, utilizing calling, obviously, emailing, obviously, and as we mentioned previously, text messaging is, messaging is really beneficial, especially once you start getting into, you know, the younger generation people just really don't want to talk very much on the phone these days um you know people are working from home they are busy uh, sometimes a quick text just like hey got your inquiry i've got some rates when's a good time to connect um, it can really go a long way um, persistence definitely pays off so 93 percent of converted leads are contacted by the sixth call attempt i've heard even upwards of you know 12 to 16 the main point here is that you don't give up. Uh, you can see over here the ultimate contact strategy. Just on day one, you're calling at least three times um, and sending out an email day four, you're sending out a second email day five, hitting them with another call and on and on and on for the following, you know, the total of 22 days. This is just a recommendation. It might honestly be even a little conservative. Just get on the phone hit them as hard as you can and be consistent. Just because they're not picking up doesn't mean that they don't want to quote. Don't stop trying until you get a definite no. And even then, keep them in your pipeline. It never hurts to follow up with them, you know, next year. Maybe they're looking to renew or looking for a different company to write a policy with. This is a really interesting slide um, that just goes over, again, based off of our research, what the best times to call are during the day. You can see here on this graph to the right, Wednesdays and Thursdays are typically the most successful days to contacting a consumer. Studies show that the response rate on Thursday is 49% better than Tuesday calls. So that's um, definitely a significant difference there. And then as far as best times to call, this can vary as well throughout the day, but you can see over here on the right, the best times to contact uh, range in the early morning, you know, around 8 a.m. as people are getting into work or on their way to work, um, and then around 4 to 5 p.m. So people are wrapping up their day. They're not yet back home, getting wrapped up in family life, you know, cooking dinner, what have you. So those are definitely the most successful times that we've seen as far as getting a hold of people. And just to reiterate, there's 164% difference between early afternoon calls and late afternoon calls. So even the difference between 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. is huge. All right, so just another best practice. You don't want to leave a lead behind. I know I kind of talked about this on the last slide, but it really is so important to just keep trying until you get that no. Don't stop until you're literally told to stop. 
And even if they aren't going to give you their business, ask them if they know anyone else who might be interested. Maybe your policies better fit their neighbor or their sister, who knows. Um, and then use a stamp. It might sound kind of old fashioned, but there's nothing wrong with mailers. And we've heard feedback, you know, a lot of people find a lot of success just sending out a mailer. Hey, got your inquiry. Don't forget about us. Um, here's, you know, some mock rates just based off of the information provided. Give us a call. So how can you measure the success of your agency? Like Greg was saying earlier, um, which definitely is amplified by using a CRM, you wanna track everything. So review key performance indicators quarterly. What is your quote and closing rates? What is your cost per policy? What is your lifetime value? So how much money have you made off of this customer that we sent you a year ago? Um, just keeping track of those, uh, those stats, again, are also really helpful for us. So if you are finding that your results are less than ideal, we can work with you, see where there's opportunities to build your business um, and really help you grow. So if something's not working, try optimizing your staff, your training, uh, your sales process. Again, are you hitting them enough times uh, throughout the week and on that first day? Um, utilizing all forms of communication and uh, you know, optimizing your lead account. So give it some time as well. Uh, stick with it for at least 90 days. That's just a basic rule of thumb. Before you make a final decision, whoever you're getting your leads from, really that 90 day period is just um, overall the most telling when you're looking to see what kind of results you're gonna get. This is an example of a lifetime policy, how much you can make off of um, the leads that we send you. So in this example, let's say you get 145 leads at $15 a lead. Your total cost is looking at just over $2,100. Let's say you quote 102 and you close six. Based off of the six that you close, writing a 200, sorry, $1,200 policy, your total annual premium comes in at 7,200. Based off of our 80% retention rate, um, you're looking at over 60, sorry, 36 months of a lifetime value, just uh, you know, $18,000 off of just that $2,100 investment you made 36 months back. So you can see here that the potential to make money off just a couple leads and closing just those six leads is huge. So why Quote Wizard? Obviously, we are a great value for agents. You can see over here, uh, John Pavle, I'm sure many of you know, out of Texas, the three-time Inner Circle Elite agent, one of our um, favored partnered agents. We've been working with them for a long time. Uh, you can see over here some advice that he gives to new Allstate agents. Um, our online search leads have been proven to convert at five times the rate of other search leads or other leads in the industry. So, you know, the conversion rates are there. Um, 65 to 70% of overall quote rate, um, which is leading the market as far as quoting rates go. Limited lead distribution, we only uh, sell a lead to a maximum of four agents. This is best case scenario for us. On average, this ranges between two to three agents per lead just because of scheduling restrictions, territory restrictions, filter restrictions, what have you. Um, so the competition on that one lead is, is low. And then we have a very flexible credit policy. We're gonna work with you. If something's not working with your leads, we'll take a look, see where they're coming from. Um, our return policy is very liberal. Um, you can return, we don't have a limit really on how many leads you can return. Once you hit a 40% return rate, it does start negatively impacting your, your volume, but I've never come across an agent who's made it that far. So it is extremely rare. Um, warm transfer calls, we offer them at very competitive rates, which we'll go over soon. And then our leads are integrated with the majority of major CRMs. So we're just trying to make it as seamless as possible for your business. Here are the example um, retail prices for our live transfer packages. You can see we have a variety of auto calls and home calls. Uh, over here is the retail value, which is essentially where they start the bidding process, depending on where you are in the country, this is, these prices are going to vary. Um, it is bid based. So if you're looking for live call transfers, we have a lot of great options, um, which include a lot of really beneficial filters, as you can read here. 
And then of course we have web, web, web lead packages as well. Um, we're always offering promotional pricing. Uh, we've got monthly promos. Um, you can see here, we've got very competitive pricing when it comes to ideal filters for um, you know, whatever carrier you're working for. And again, we offer auto home uh, renters and uh, condo leads as well. So just to talk a little bit about what Greg and I do specifically, uh, we represent the elite account management team. Um, this is a campaign that Quote Wizard launched um, just over a year ago. We just had our one year anniversary a couple weeks ago. Um, essentially, we are looking to offer um, additional benefits to agents who have a little bit more marketing dollars to work with each month. The benefits for this program include having a dedicated account manager and business development representatives, myself and Greg, um, unlimited vacation time so you can pause your account whenever, and lead scheduling, um, whatever schedule you want to receive leads between, we can customize that to your liking. Lifetime promotional pricing, which is um, basically, we're looking to see what the absolute best price we can get you on the leads is and just lock you in on that price. It does vary by territory, where you are, you know, how the market's doing in your uh, area of the country, but we'll work with you to offer um, the best price we have we can and just lock that in so you're not dropping off the promotional deal you know after a promotional window or what have you and then just like we're doing now we have personalized training for you and your staff so myself or Greg we can talk to your staff go through best practices um, we have different versions of this presentation that we can tailor to what you are looking for and just kind of help your staff understand uh, you know our recommendations based off of successful agencies what um, proper sales process would look like. Uh, and then we have cost per acquisition coaching. So again, this kind of ties back to having a dedicated account manager. We can say with you one-on-one, -on -one, go through your ROI, go through your stats, see how your business is doing, and look for areas of opportunity where we can help you grow further. So if you're interested in getting started with Quote Wizard, uh, you can reach us at these numbers provided. Um, Greg and myself, we do divide up the country a bit. So based off of whether you're in the Northeast or Midwest or Southeast or West, um, you can give us a call or shoot us an email. Um, we also have the Quote Wizard Marketing email down there as well. And if you're already an agent, uh, call your team rep for info on current client promotions. We've always got something going on. Um, if you shoot us a recommendation, um, we love giving out referral bonuses for anyone you can send our way who isn't already on network. And if you wanna just take down the customer service line and uh, email, we're always available to help you if you have any issues with your account. Um, call today, we, right now we are doing a promotion. If you mention that you attended this webinar, you'll receive an extra $100 lead credit in addition to whatever kind of promotions we have going on for your company. Um, definitely worth a call. We can work with you um, and provide you with some great benefits. We wanna thank you guys for listening. Um, if you do have any questions, we are open to take them now. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of take over here. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing. Let me switch back to the gallery view. Craig, uh, excuse me, Greg, Kelsey, thank you guys so much for, for sharing all this powerful presentation. We do have several questions, so I just want to remind everybody to submit questions using the Q&A function just down at the bottom of your Zoom uh, window. But before I get to the questions, I wanted to mention John Pavle, um, he's in Texas. He actually just filmed some awesome courses for CWC. So for those of you that are in CWC, I just wanted to share my screen really quickly and just highlight those. You might not have seen them. Um, so I'm, I'm pulling up my uh, platform here. So this is the Craig Wiggins coaching platform. So for all of you members, when you log in at WigginsUniversity.com, scroll down to the special guests section. Look at all these courses. Here we go. So we have all the special guests sections. So we have Allison Donner's courses, Todd McLean from Farmers, Mark Mercer's courses on leads. I don't know if y'all work uh, much with Mark or not, but he does a ton of leads as well. He has all these great courses on leads. And then John Pavle 
has four courses on how he and his teamwork leads. So you see, you know, seven chapters, nine chapters, seven, 11. So we've got a fair amount of content here from somebody that they said is one of their top producers. I didn't even know that he was in the presentation. So I just wanted to highlight that fact. If you're in CWC, make sure you go through these awesome courses from Mark and John. They are great at leads and just fantastic. So let's get to some questions. Let's get to some questions here. Um, and I'll just kind of let you guys pick and choose uh, which questions that you want to answer. Bob wants to know, do you recommend leaving voice messages? So when you were talking about all those calls on day one, all the way up to day 20 something, do you recommend always leaving voice messages? Why or why not? I will say yes, I would recommend leaving a voicemail. Um, if you have that option, obviously take advantage of it. You know, there's nothing wrong with just having that in the forefront of their mind. They're not available now, but they're going to listen to that voicemail. Good just to hear another person too. Um, having your personality come out in that voicemail can really bring someone in um, and sell yourself before you even connect with them on the phone. So I would, I would definitely recommend leaving a voicemail. I love it. And I would agree. You know, what do y'all do? And I always say this when people say, should I leave a voicemail on calling and requote a win back a cross sell an internet lead, whether it's new or aged, whatever I say, pull out your phone, pull out your phone. Imagine someone calling you right now, even if you haven't requested anything, they're just calling you right now. It's a local area code. Do you don't, you don't answer that. What psychopath, what crazy person answers the phone from an unknown number? We don't do that these days, right? So they're not gonna answer the phone first First off. Let's say they don't leave a voicemail. Are you gonna call them back? No, again, what crazy dude is gonna call an unknown number back? So of course, we teach to always leave a voicemail. Keep them simple, keep them short, keep them sweet. Don't try to sell via voicemail. Don't try to sell via email. Don't be like, hey, listen, you know, it would mean the world to us. We've got these great new rates. It would be an honor. None of that crap. Don't say that. Hi, Kelsey. This is Joseph Puckett from Allstate giving you a call. I'm just about done with those quotes you requested. Need a few pieces of info. Give me a shout back. 256-490-3739. Thanks so much. Talk with you soon. Click. Right, so very assumptive, very assertive, not salesy, not beggy, not desperate, but I'm so glad that you agree to leave voicemails because again, so many people screen calls. I screen calls, I don't answer unknown numbers. I'm not crazy. Okay, let's see here. Michael said or asked in slide 12, it doesn't say when you should text, please share your thoughts. But before y'all answer, I have to say this, since we work with a lot of Allstate agents, you know, y'all know if you're with Allstate first, you can only text through hearsay, all right? If you're with Farmers or State Farm, if you're independent, you can really do a lot of things that you want. But for many of you that are with Allstate, remember, you can only text through hearsay relate and you must have um, their double opt-in for you to be able to text. So I'm, I would not recommend y'all just be blasting out text opt-ins to people because you'll get a lot of opt-outs and they'll turn off your texting. So just be careful, be compliant. And whatever you do, keep in mind this presentation is generalized for multiple carriers. So of course, I'm just inserting disclaimer here, be compliant. Okay, own your own compliance. Let's say though, they can text. What would y'all recommend? When, how often, what would you say about texting? Yeah, I would say um, when you first make an initial call on the lead to send a text after. Um, so what a lot of these leads are gonna see is they're gonna get an initial barrage of calls. So kind of maybe you leave your voicemail and you send a follow-up text as well. You know, I'll listen to voicemails too, but I'm, I generally respond to text pretty well too. If you just text and say, Hey, I received your information through quote wizard. I'd love to schedule a call with you. I know you're probably busy now. How's your calendar look the next few days? Um, I think texting in that first, you know, right when you get the lead is a good way to do it. And then kind of on the slide Kelsey had too, when we say email the first time day one, day four, whatever it is, I think you can kind of, throw text in there as well. So maybe you send a quick one and then after a couple of days, send another text. But I think you'll see the most success if you send a text when you initially receive the lead because they're going to receive a barrage of calls. They might not want to pick up your call, but they'll be open to res responding to your texts. I'm open to responding to texts. Like Joseph said, I never pick up a random call. I don't think anybody does nowadays. So, you know, still do that call, but you're probably going to have to send a text or that voicemail to get through to them that who you are and, and what you want to do and help them. So uh, hopefully that helps. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, Kelsey, do me a favor, pull up the slide again with y'all's contact information. Uh, Danette, 
Jonathan, um, and a couple others have asked can you, for the final slide. The one prior uh, with your, con yeah, there we go, uh, with the contact information. So y'all, if you want their contact information, go ahead and take a screenshot. Um, you know, Kelsey and Greg are fantastic. I've worked with them actually when we were buying quote wizard leads in the past. We're not actually doing a ton of leads right now, but they were always super responsive and super awesome. And again, I work with a lot of our mentoring and coaching members that use quote wizard and y'all I've heard a lot of negative things about a lot of lead vendors. I just don't hear much, if any, about quote wizard. And what it comes down to though, is I want to go back to what you guys were talking about in terms of the expectations. You know, somebody said, somebody sent a chat, a question about how many of those leads were quoted. I'm not so sure you'd quote 105 out of 145 leads. I may be wrong, but that would be probably a pretty high quote rate. I'd, I'd expect you to be, able, to be able to quote though, 30 to 45% or so of your leads and to write 10 to 20% of those leads. So I do think that that number, that expectation of six policies, that's low. I think that's really, really low. They were being super conservative, weren't y'all? Y'all were being super conservative in terms of only writing six policies out of 145 leads. I would be happy with a three to 5% total close rate on the total volume. But to get that, you're gonna have to quote 30% or so and close 10% of those. So if I bought 150 leads, I would be tickled to death with 15 to 20 policies. Um, so y'all, I think they were being a bit too conservative on that side because some people asked about those numbers. I do think that quoted volume might be a bit high, unless maybe not, maybe 145 leads, quote 100 policies, maybe. Auto property umbrella. I could see that, but do y'all y'all want to give any thoughts on, on the quality and and you know the expectations for return on investment? So yeah, just just to follow up on what you said there too, Joseph. The quote rate is on the leads that you actually get a hold of and contact too. So it wouldn't be sixty to seventy percent of your overall. It would be you contact sixty to seventy percent, and then you quote sixty to seventy percent of those people you're actually talking to. So it's like you said, that would bring the number down a good bit from the overall. Um, but just wanted to kind of clear that up so it makes a little more sense. Yeah, but those are kind of the numbers that we always talk, look at. I tell somebody, if you're closing 5% of purchase leads, you're doing really good in the first month, in the first month. So if I bought 100 leads and I wrote five households, 12 to 15 or so policies, I'll take that. But then we keep working them over and over and over and over. I found it interesting that you said persistence pays. I don't know if you got that from me or if y'all been saying it, or maybe I got it from you, but that's a big thing that I preach. Persistence pays, right? Just because someone says no, not interested today, doesn't mean they'll be not interested forever. So we close many more old leads every month than we do new leads. Many more. And I imagine most of you do the same too, right? So keep working those leads over and over and over as you build that pipeline. Like people like John Pavle, like Mark Mercer and others, even like us, um, we have huge databases of leads and data that we've been uh, nurturing and cultivating for years. And honestly, that's why we don't have to buy a lot of leads right now. It's because we're working through the stuff that we got two years ago, four years ago, five years ago. We still close, you guys might laugh, we still close every month or two leads from Insure Me. Some of you young bucks are like, who the heck's Insure Me? I don't know, somebody bought them a long time ago. They don't even exist anymore. But we still close leads that we bought from Insure Me in 2011, 12, and 13. And I just laugh every time we do, the sales producer says what the source is, insure me lead from 2012. I'm like, heck yeah, dude, that's good return on investment. So anyways, Melissa asked a question about warm transfers. Is it a bidding thing? Like some people do bidding or is, are those like flat rates and then you just divvy them out based on availability? I'll take that one. Um, so the, the live calls are bid based. Um, however, that doesn't mean that we're just going to automatically price you over the highest bid. You know, if the person making the highest bid is only getting one a day and we have plenty left over, we can price you a little bit lower than the max bid. So it kind of goes both ways. Yes, it is bid based, but it's not like you're just going to be driven up and up and up and up forever. And we do have a cap. So you're never going to have to, on our auto leads, pay more than $60 per call that's where we max out so you don't have to worry about paying a hundred dollars for an auto lead or something like that okay and um let's see we got that done all right so we answered that 
Credits. Evelyn asked, how do we do lead credits? Is there a cap on how many return? I know I heard you say something about 40%. Um, our issue with web leads is that we've got a lot of bad numbers of people who just have too many incidents or, or well, that wouldn't be creditable or would it be if they're supposed to be somewhat lower incident free, but then they also say they just weren't interested. So how strict are y'all with credits? Could you kind of go over that again for Miss Evelyn? Yeah, of course I'll take it. So like Kelsey said, you can credit up to 40% of the leads. Um, and having too many incidences could be a reason where you credit a lead because your filter might say that they have no incidences or one incidence or less. So if it doesn't meet the filter you have set up where they have an age limit, so you only want leads over 25 years of age or whatever else, no accidents, no tickets, no incidences, and they have one of those or their age doesn't meet it, you can filter a lead for that. If they're a current um, client of your carrier, you can filter a lead for that. So if they're already under policy, um, if it has bad contact information, so if it has a bad phone number, bad email, whatever else, that's creditable. Uh, the one you said where they just said they're not interested, that's not really, that's, that's kind of just part of the game. Um, you know, people, if you get a hold of them, you talk to them, they, they filled out their information, they wanted to, maybe they're already working with someone else or, um, you know, maybe they, they aren't interested at the time, but they were when they filled out the lead. So that would be the only thing out of what was mentioned that wouldn't be creditable. But it's a pretty easy process. We have an online platform where you have an account manager or someone kind of show you how to credit the lead. You just go in, select any leads that you want credited. You say the reason, so bad contact info, submit, and it's, we're pretty liberal, like Kelsey said, on what gets credited. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. What about warm transfers or life transfers? Josh said sometimes they don't meet the filters that we've agreed to or whatever when I'm working with a life transfer. Are life transfers creditable or are those maybe not as creditable? How does that work, especially if it doesn't meet, like maybe they're supposed to be insured or is that a filter? I don't know. Can you maybe talk about the filters? Because Bob also asked about different types of filters, home ownership, multi-car. Can you do it by zip code? That's a very loaded question from two different people. Credits on life transfers, but also filters for life transfers and leads. Can y'all talk a little bit more about how y'all do all that? Yeah, if you want, I can pull up a slide that kind yeah. of um, okay. goes over the different filters that we offer for auto and home. Um, let me just get that pulled up here so you guys can see it. And like zip codes too, is it possible to drill down to just specific zip codes or do you have to do it by area code? That's always a big one, you know. Right. So for live calls, um, we generally want to see you going full state. That isn't to say that it isn't possible to get a little more um, narrowed down, but especially when it comes to live transfer calls, to put it in perspective, we have so many web leads. We're able to kind of filter down, see where you want to be exactly. If you want to do a 10 mile radius, sure, we can do that around your office. Um, but with live calls, since we, you know, comparatively, we don't have nearly as much there in higher demand we always recommend doing full state because that's how you're going to have it a level playing field. Um, you can see here what filters we do offer. Um, so these are non-customizable at this time. Um, what you see is what we have available. Uh, and then what was, oh, the credit question. Calls are non-refundable. Um, under extreme circumstances, let's say we transfer you a, a consumer and the line drops yeah, we're gonna credit you that call. Obviously you didn't even have a chance to talk to them. Like we're, we're not gonna hold that to you. Um, but I do wanna mention that before we transfer the call, we always have a vetting process. So our call center will go through the questions that they answered based off of the filters that you're purchasing. They double check to make sure that the information is accurate before we pass it along. So if they fail that questionnaire, we're not gonna give it to you. That being said, we can't control when people lie to us. We're just hoping that they are being as honest as possible. So if we do transfer them to you and they said that they were currently insured and turns out they're not, we do not offer refunds on those. Now, I know no one has ever told a lie to y'all, right? They say, oh, no, I've never had an accident. And then you run their MVR and they got like four DUIs, right? So I get where y'all are coming from. And Matt just sent me a chat saying our current platform allows for credits up to 40%. That's for web leads. Our current average credit rate across all active accounts, though, is only 18%. I bet that's pretty low. That's, that's a pretty interesting statistic that he shared with me. Um, Larry said, you said that these leads typically just go up to like around four agents. Will they go to more than one agent with the same carrier or are you carrier exclusive? We are carrier exclusive. 
If okay. you work in Allstate and you get that lead, you're the only Allstate agent with that lead from Quill Wizard. That's an important thing to know. Uh, ben, no, that's true. So they might shop on different things, different sites or whatever. Now, somebody asked a question, <clears throat> do you recycle leads after six months, one year, two years? Do you recycle leads and try to resell them to other people? I assume that answer is a big no, but do you do age leads? So I'm adding to this question. Do you guys sell age lead lists or anything? No, we don't sell age leads. These are coming in in real time. Um, the only situation where you might run into a lead being a couple hours old is let's say it came in overnight, you know, three in the morning, we didn't have any agents available. So we held on to it until first thing in the morning when agents are coming into the office. That's about as aged as it gets. Okay, gotcha. Um, let's see here. Ben asked, do you have reports on your platform that tracks contacts, quotes and close ratios, or do you guide do you have one that you recommend for agents to use? So I guess he's kind of asking about CRM. Do y'all have a built-in CRM or anything? Or, or are there, there are any CRMs that you recommend agents use? We don't have a built-in CRM in our platform, but we do have a really user-friendly website um, where you can track all of your leads. Uh, this doesn't include like closing or contact rates or anything like that, but it does kind of just conduce all of your lead information into one manageable site. Um, as far as recommendations go, I personally can't give a recommendation. I've never used one before. Um, but uh, as far as other agent feedback, I know Blitz is popular. Um, yeah, I'll take that. So in fact, someone asked about Allstate Lead Manager, for example. So if you're with Allstate, Allstate Lead Manager, which was Blitz, and then they, they customized it. Uh, we use and love Lightspeed Voices follow-up tool. Love, love, love the follow -up tool .com. Um, I also know the guys behind Ricochet, um, Dave Williams, and Tom Bianca at Ricochet. Um, you know, Velocify. I'm not a big fan of Velocify anymore, but they're good. They're they're someone that we've used back in the day. So I love follow up tool, Allstate Lead Manager, um, Ricochet, whatever you and your team feel comfortable actually using. That's what matters. It's, it's whatever you're going to actually use. If it's too complicated and you and your team aren't going to use it, then don't do it. Um, make sure that your team are using it because sincerely, I promise y'all, I can guarantee y'all, you're going to close way more leads in months two through 36 than you do in the month that you bought it. If properly worked and followed up on it. Right. So, so keep that in mind. You want to increase your return on investments for leads. You better have a good CRM to stay on them. And then agency zoom. How could I forget agency zoom? We love agency zoom for sales tracking and that's a wonderful way. And they also have some, some lead management capabilities too. Tolga at agency zoom is awesome, but tracking your sales, track, 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 measure, measure, measure everything. Agency zoom is fantastic because you can track the sale record the source, see all the premium from that source, who closed what from that source. Um, check out Agency Zoom. Every agency needs Agency Zoom. All right, and then when you need a more robust lead management system, some of the ones that I recommended um, are fantastic and just whatever you're going to actually use. All right, that's, that's crucial. Phil asked a question about returns and stuff. He says, can you talk about the difference between not interested and did not request, which is the most common reason to return? So if someone says I didn't request quotes, that means they didn't request quotes and maybe some affiliate pushed it through or something. But if you finally get them and they say, hey, I'm not interested, that means they're just no longer interested. That's not really a reason to return it, right? I kind of answered that question for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, can you clarify, John wants to know, can you clarify if the pre premier leads uh, which should not have tickets or accidents that we should get credit after we check MVR LAS. So I guess that kind of goes back to if somebody says they don't have accidents on like their online quote request or whatever, but then we run reports and they do, that's not a reason why an agent should be requesting credits, is it? Okay. Correct. Kind of what y'all answered about the direct mail. Bill asked, does Quote Wizard sell leads generated by other internet lead providers? Some companies do, and that's where you get into a competition with agents from the same carrier. Do you guys aggregate leads from other carriers and then try, or other lead vendors and then try to push them out? Yes. So we do source some of our leads from third party vendors. The majority of our leads are coming straight from us. However, as part of our partnership agreement with these vendors, they're not then selling that lead to their 
agents while we're also selling that same lead to our agents. So there's an agreement there where that lead is still only being sold to four. Gotcha. So you're trying mainly Google search, other organic type stuff, but you will source it from other sources. And y'all just remember, this is a numbers game. Seriously, if you buy 100 leads and close five to seven of them in the first month, that's really good. But then another five to seven in months two through three, and then another five to seven in months three through 12. Yeah, if you can close 20 of, out of 100 over a year and a half or so, that's fantastic. It's all about building the book, buying enhanced comp, buying variable comp, buying a bigger bonus, buying bigger renewals. It's just like investing in your business. If you're expecting to make money on web leads, particularly or even live transfers in the first month, you're probably not because you also have to pay commissions to your staff and all that kind of stuff. But can you come close to breaking even? Maybe. And will you definitely be making money once it renews once or twice and especially with bonus? Yes. And if you're on ECP or higher commissions, you, you can, even with a new variable comp, if you're with Allstate, you can, but it's all about having the proper expectations for yourself too. We talk to a lot of people who say, ah, I don't know, I can't spend 3000 to make 2000 Yes, you can, because you're going to make that 2000 again and again and again. Look at it that way, y'all. If you can make money within a year or two off of an investment, would you do it? Would you buy a book right now? Let's say a book of business was for sale right now, five minutes from your house. A nice, good, clean quality book that has good retention, good loss ratios, et cetera. Would you pay two to three times the revenue for that book, not even the profit, but the revenue for that book, and take seven to 10 years to pay it off at a high, not high interest, but at an interest rate? Yes. With leads, if you can make money within a year or two, that's a win. Think about, think about it that way when you're investing in your business. Um, duh, 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 duh. I think that is all of the questions um, that we got to. So I think we got to lots and lots of questions. I'll just give it like another second. If there's any more Q and A's that want to be submitted, y'all, by the way, if you're not with CWC, you might've seen behind me, this little, this little red thingy that kept popping up, save 100, all lowercase, save 100. If you're not with Craig Wiggins coaching on demand, check it out. CraigWigginsCoaching.com slash training. Use promo code save 100, all lowercase. Ah, there it is. Look at it. Eh, right there. I feel like a weatherman. Save 100 to get 100 bucks off your first month. Um, if you'd like to check out CraigWigginsCoaching.com. We'd love to work with y'all. Jonathan says, can we get Kelsey to dance again? Like she was dancing before the video. Oh, she did it. All right. Good stuff. Oh, wait. All right. Caleb wants y'all's contact info one more time. Would you mind just one more time pulling up your contact info? And with that said, I want to thank you guys for joining us. I want to thank our partners and friends at Quote Wizard. You guys are fantastic. And Matt, who's been listening behind the scenes, um, Matt and Kelsey and Greg, the whole Quote Wizard team, we are so thankful to have you all part of Craig Wiggins Coaching. And we look forward to seeing you all in February. February in Vegas is our event. I hate that we had to move it, y'all, from September. But there's a little thing called COVID going on. So we will see you all in February. I'm, I'm really thankful that we were able to do this kind of in place of the event for now. Uh, but with that said, I'll pass it back to you guys to kind of take us out. Any final thoughts from y'all? Yeah, I think just uh, oh, go ahead, Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Um, we just want to say thank you guys so much for uh, listening and being with us today. We're, you know, so grateful to have this opportunity to talk to you guys. Um, just to reiterate, internet leads are so crucial, especially as we move into a more tech-based world. Um, I know my generation hates talking on the phone, sadly. Um, so any way that you can just get that lead in your hand, shoot them a quick text, email, call, what have you. Um, it's just a great way to supplement and build your business. Any final thoughts or anything from you, Greg yeah. or Matt? I don't know if he's still on. Yeah, just uh, thanks for the opportunity, Joseph. We love working with you. I know the event in Orlando was awesome. This has been good as best we can do with it. We're looking forward to the event in uh, February in Vegas. And um, like we all said, you know, you've got our contact information. If you'd like to follow up, we'd love to talk to you. Um, but other than that, just thanks for your time and just looking forward to continue the partnership. Awesome. With that said, Thank y'all so much. Remember, if you're with CWC, I'll have this on the platform in about two hours. It takes about two hours. It'll be in the recorded webinars course. If you want your staff to watch, particularly that part where they were talking about hitting them over and over and over again, they might say, oh, I called a lead two or three times. I worked the lead. 
No, you didn't. Kelsey said, you're going to have to hit it like 20 times in the first three weeks or whatever it was. That That's really powerful, That especially that section. Y'all can watch it over and over and over again with your team. Thank you, Kelsey, Greg, Matt, Quote Wizard. Thank you to everybody for jumping on. I appreciate y'all. Hope you have a great rest of the week and an awesome weekend ahead. Keep rocking, keep rolling, and let me know if I can help y'all with anything at all. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.